Dr. Gray is a graduate of UC Riverside, and before that she was a graduate of Cal State Fullerton, if I recall, right. and she works for the Sheriff's Department with the Coroner's Area, the division of the Coroner's Division, and she also teaches at Riverside Community College, and she also teaches at Cal Poly Pomona, and I think you're going to have just a wonderful evening this evening. So without any further ado, Dr. Alexis Gray. Oh, still clapping. <laughs> Give you a little back up. Uh, I was telling Eric before we got here, when uh, I, I used to be married, obviously I, you know, there's not enough crazy for all of us to go around. And um, when I was married, I was married to a politician, and I would shake people's hands, and they'd say, oh, Mrs. Gray, what do you do? And I would say, oh, I'm an anthropologist. And they'd say, I loved dinosaurs when I was a kid, too. <laughs> and I'd just kind of look at them and blink and go, that has nothing to do with me. <laughs> anthropologist, I do people. And then you have to be careful about saying it like that. But um, what I meant was, I study people. So anthropology is a holistic discipline. Holistic not doesn't just mean medicine, but it's an all-around approach. We steal from everybody to do what we need to do. And what we want to do is find out what does it mean to be human. That's what anthropologists do. So we steal from physicists and geologists and historians and psychologists and sociologists. I steal from biologists primarily. Um, and we want to study what people are. Um, forensic anthropologists in particular use biology, we use archaeology, we use physics, and we use cultural aspects to really get at the aspects of a person that are both generalized to them and unique to them. Like, how do I know how tall you are after you're dead? Well, because we did studies of lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people, and I know if I measure your leg, it's going to come between this spot and this spot, and that says how tall you were. That's all. So those are the generals or sometimes specific. Like this. This is as bad as it'll get. This is as scary as it is. Are you scared? This is a lesson in don't take drugs and learn to fly. Because I can tell you, you will not fly. He thought he could. But what an anthropologist would do in this situation is see how he is not someone you can tell anything about anymore. I can tell you that this wasn't something that somebody mean came along and did to him. That's a coyote came by for a snack. And I can tell you that he's been sitting on the surface for probably about a month to a month and a half based on where he is out in the desert, based on the condition of his skin and the lack of, um, of... telephone distracted me. Flies, there we go, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> My flies fly like this. So one of the things that an anthropologist will do is help people determine human versus non-human. Like, is that bone human or not? This is a big deal. Because what if it's a chicken? What if somebody, uh, we had a woman in uh, Wisconsin, apparently they don't have a lot of forensic anthropologists in Wisconsin. A woman in Wisconsin said she murdered her baby when I was a, a graduate student. And they sent, they, they excavated her yard and they found a suitcase and in the suitcase were little bones and so they sent us the bones and my, my professor looks at me, hands me the bone and says, what is it? She says, it's a baby. I say, it's a buffalo wing. And that's what it was. It was a buffalo wing. She had hidden a suit. 5150 people come in all sizes and shapes and crazy. And so um, she had a, a whole suitcase full of buffalo wings. She had killed no one. Possibly an expensive trip to Hooters. <laughs> one of the reasons that I... Uh, have been more interested in public speaking as of late has to do more with people's misconceptions about what a forensic anthropologist is. Uh, up until very recently, there were no television shows about forensic anthropologists. And in fact, when I told my father what I did or what, what I studied, my father says to me, oh, so you're a forensic pathologist. And I said, no, Dad. That's a guy with an MD. That is someone who is a doctor. And he says, well, you have a PhD. Isn't that the same thing? And I said, no, no, I promise you that if I start practicing medicine, I will be jailed within the hour. <laughs> and he says, oh, OK. And so he says, so it's like Quincy. <laughs> and I'm like, well, no, Dad. Uh, that is a forensic pathologist. And, and again, he is a medical examiner which takes a medical degree. And actually, we're very fortunate tonight, total surprise to me, 
we happen to have two of our medical examiners here from the coroner's office. See, mild-mannered people right there. <laughs> Less mild-mannered like that. Uh, this is <laughs> Dr. Stephen Trinkle, and I think a stunning picture of Mark Schrader in his usual sleepy position, his evil minion. Um, this is uh, Dr. Trinkle. We had a difficult removal of a femur. It wouldn't come out. Uh, we need to remove this both to assess how tall the person is. That's the anthropology side of it. Uh, and uh, to send it in for DNA, which happens to be part of our county's anthropological duties as well. Mm, macerating a body. This is one of our favorite techniques. This is called cold water maceration. It's how we get the stuff off. Because I want the bones. I don't really need the rest of it. And um, so we put them in buckets of cold water and we wait. This can take up to a year. But it's, I tell you, the bones when they come out, they are perfect. It, it doesn't, it's not attractive. It's, you know, 